he was already sick, and when we realized that we were in love, um, and we talked about our future together, he, he warned me off it. <laughs> he said, I'm not a good deal, you know. I'm, I'm worried about me, and I don't know how I'm going to get help, because nobody will help me. And I thought, well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Why wouldn't somebody help? You know, I mean, it just seemed impossible to me. Um, and I just didn't think pain could kill people. I don't think anyone thinks that. But it's true. It can and does. So I just said, oh, never mind. It's fine. I'll go forward. And we went through a lot. It was very hard for me in reality. It was easy for me in theory to say, you know, oh, who cares? It's fine. Let's go forward. But as a human being, as a woman who wanted attention from her man and you know, to have fun with him and do everything you normally do. Um, it was hard because he was very disabled, really, from the very beginning. And I wasn't, I didn't take it well. And I think a lot of people don't take it well. I think spouses feel very rejected and um, abandoned. And they can't help but blame the person who brings them the bad news. So it's very, it's devastating. But I loved him, so I stuck with him. So I actually am sympathetic to people who don't get it and who don't do anything about it if they do get it because I was one of them for 10 years. It's a hard thing to get through your mind around. It's a hard thing to believe that there are literally millions of Americans living in suicidal levels of pain who are being abused by the medical profession. That's a pretty hard thing to take in. But that's what's going on. These people have become such an abstraction, you know, to the media, to the courts, to the, to, the, to, the, to the Congress. I mean, these people do not exist. You gotta understand that. You know, we, when we started, as I say, all there were were, everybody was, the assumption was everybody got their pain treated and all the, the problem was drug dealing doctors, you know, and uh, not enough law enforcement. That was the way it was perceived. And the truth of it was that hidden behind that lie uh, was millions and millions of seriously ill people who are, just know that their life's draining away from them moment by moment. It's a blessing that this happened, that this issue came to light, that this is something that the country's going to have to grapple with for the next few years, because we're going to define ourselves again, I think, as people, and whether or not we're people who care about each other, I think it matters whether or not Americans care about each other. Right now, the evidence is not good. The law and the way it's enforced and all the different pressures that are on medicine and all this propaganda we've heard about addiction, um, put it all together. And, and what you have is a situation where people feel that they must brutalize people in pain. It's just the only right thing to do. <laughs> you know? It blows my mind, but that's really what you find. If you go to addiction treatment programs, you go to drug court, um, they take people off pain medicine who are in pain because they've been determined to be an addict. Um, and the people who do that think they're doing a good thing. They're sure they're doing a good thing. These monks talk about finding a way to do it joyfully. Because if the problem is serious enough, you absolutely are obligated to have a good time. <laughs> and so that's what we do now. And we've been so much more successful <laughs> because it's fun to be us. You know, it's fun to kick the government around. I still believe in the law. It's not easy. There are lots of traps sort of set in the courts. It's not easy to get to the Supreme Court. It isn't automatic at all. It's rare. Um, so we just work harder, dig deeper, and attempt to live joyfully despite having all the facts. <laughs>